Well, it's Wednesday. That means I'm joined by my good mate, Credlin Regular, wordsmith and broadcaster, Kel Richards. Well, thank you for your time, as always. Always good words that uh, you suggested today. This one, I think, particularly has been raised on Talkback Radio, and uh, good to get your take on it. Give us a sense of the history and, and the usage of the term anti-Semitism, Kel. Anti-Semitism is recorded in English from 1880, but a few years earlier, it turned up in German, coined by a man named Wilhelm, uh, Wilhelm Marr who was uh, anti-Semitic himself and wrote anti-Semitic articles and pamphlets. Uh, the word Semite itself uh, refers to any of the people in Genesis chapter 10 who are the descendants of one of the sons of Noah, a man named Shem. They are Semites. The anti is put in front of it to mean antagonistic. So anti-Semitism is antagonism to Jewish people. It's, it's hatred and disparagement of Jewish people. Uh, and it's been, as I say, as a word since 1880, but it's been around much longer than the word has been around. Oh, interestingly, can I just add? Uh, and when... so is the behaviour, as you know, the pogroms yeah, over yeah. time, over history, hundreds and hundreds of years. Sorry, Can, can I just... This is interesting. A, a, a reader of the Oswords website that I run, who's lived in Germany, said in Germany they don't use anti-Semitism anymore. They think it's too vague. They now use the term Jew hatred because they think that's a blunter and more honest expression. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? And that is something I've used a little bit here too as well because I think you've got to call it out as it is and not a lot of people, as I mentioned that talk back conversation, I think not a lot of people uh, are confident about the term anti-Semitism. Another query for one of our listeners, uh, Leslie, she wants you to explain the origins of the expression Zionism. Well, Zion is the ancient biblical name for the site where Jerusalem stands, on Mount Zion. Uh, it was turned into Zionism as a, a political movement by a man named Theodore Herzl, 1897. And, and it was in those days a movement se seeking to establish a Jewish homeland in Palestine. Since the United Nations established Israel in 1947, it has been the, the general movement, the political movement, to defend and take care of, protect the Jewish homeland, which is what Israel is. So that's what Zionism is about. It, it, it's about saying the, mm. the Jews are the indigenous people of that part of the world and they need a homeland there. I hope people who are ignorant just heard that because it is the return of Jews and not the establishment of Jews uh, in their original homeland. They were drummed out over thousands of years. Uh, some remained, not many, and it was bringing them back because this idea that they shouldn't be there because they were never there, we've got to put that uh, one to bed. Christopher wants to know, what's the origin of the expression beside yourself? I use it a lot. I've got no idea. Cal, what can you tell us? Okay. Well, it's very old. Uh, it turns up in... William Caxton was the first man to do printing in England. And in 1490, it turns up in mm -hmm. one of his translations. It basically means uh, an overflow of uh, emotion. And the idea is that all of the emotions pour out of you and basically sit beside you like a second self. So there's me and there's all of my emotions as well. I'm beside myself. I love it. I love it. As I said, I use it all the time. Now I know what it actually means. Hey, Brent, another one of our viewers wants to know, what's the origin? I, I probably could guess this one, but let's let's get it from the expert. What's the origin of Bucket List? Look, you will have guessed it. It does come from the 2007 movie, the idea of the list of things you'll do before you kick the bucket. So we can tell you who came up with it. There's a Hollywood screenwriter named Justin Zachman. He wrote the script for the movie. So I think I can say with a fair amount of confidence, Justin Zachman was the man who came up with Bucket List. And it's very rare that one person comes up with an expression that takes off in the English language. But Justin's done it. Bucket list is now part of our conversation in English. Hey, come on. I reckon it goes back way before that. You really? don't say what's in your bucket list. Yes. Well, yeah, the other buy it was just okay. uh, in I recent time. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying so far the Oxford English Dictionary who look for citations going back have not found any before the movie. Yeah. So it may have been around as part of conversational English and not recorded. That's possible. But there may be in some yeah. obscure newspaper or magazine or article somewhere a citation saying bucket list which has been missed. So if you've come across that, please let okay, me you know. I'll pass it on to Oxford. You are challenging our viewers because uh, they will go to ground now and try and find you something uh, to come <laughs> back with next week. Um, where can people go, Kel? Where can people go for more words for next week? Ozwords, ozwords.com.au. All right, there he is. Isn't he wonderful, Kel Richards? Send your words into ozwords.com.au. 
www.ghostbusters.com.au.